interest in those things and be in those horror films that I loved so much, you know, as I grew up. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Hey, Ron, we're going to have to take mm-hmm. like a one minute break here. Uh, sure. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Absolutely. We'll, we'll be back in a minute. Excellent. sponsor to our show phoenixshaving.com i know what you're thinking right oh another disposable razor company well the fact is they're not you remember the razors that your father and his father shaved with did you ever notice they didn't have well the embarrassing razor burn or ingrowing hairs or the razor bumps after they shaved did you notice they were also relaxed after they were done shaving Well, the problem is, these big corporations want to sell you razor after razor after razor. Think about how much money you spend a year on razors. Or, do you use electric razor? (laughs) Then you're going to find out what razor burn is. So you need to check out Phoenix Shaving Starter Kits. They come complete with the soap, the brush, and a a two-and-a-half-month supply of blades. And the most important part of it, an all-metal razor built to last generations. So, hey, you can donate it to one of your sons when they turn 18. Check out phoenixshaving.com and tell them that Gary from Night Dream said, hey, I want one. That's phoenixshaving.com now. Yeah, go check them out. Check out their website, too. If you're into paranormal, these guys from Phoenix Shaving, I tell you, they have some of the strangest uh Oh, short little movies on YouTube, uh, all around shaving. Can you believe that? Paranormal around shaving. The one I like is when the giant razor at the end kind of like, uh, guys, uh, kind of has like a, a, a happy face that it kind of ate up uh, the guys. Anyway, we're back here with Ron. Hey, Ron, you there? Yeah, Gary. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Had to get that out. So anyway. That's uh, excellent. I'm I'm ready to go check that out. Yeah, I would. I mean, they got some, you know, that's how I found them accidentally. I mean, I was on YouTube and all of a sudden I started seeing these paranormal shaving things. Yeah, it's all Mm -hmm. evolved around shaving, but I mean, they decided to take shaving to the paranormal. And, you know, (laughs) it, 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 it just tells you where the paranormal is nowadays. Well, exactly. Yes, it's it's pop culture at this point. It's really it's you know solidified itself you know with a place in pop culture. It's really fascinating. I mean, it just it's so cool to see that, isn't it? You know, there is, and there's so much. I mean, I find so much uh, on YouTube as well. Oh yeah, of course some of it you yeah. can't, you can't believe. You know, like um, like, but then there's some of the stuff you know that it's mm-hmm. really hard to say. Hey, you know that is not real. I mean, especially, I will say this, yeah. you know, the, 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 uh, uh, the, uh, was it, uh, the person in charge of the Navy, you know, back a few months yeah. ago, uh, released a, mm-hmm. a video about, uh, two fighter pilots, right? They saw a UFO mm-hmm. and they, they kicked on their afterburners and the thing just left them in dust. And, you know, wow. it's, they're slowly coming out where, you know, they're slowly admitting that there are some strange things going on which we all knew has been going on for how many years? Well, exactly. I mean, with some of the, especially the, the mass public sightings and things like that, that, you know, it's, it's really, you know, it's hard to deny that there's something going on. What exactly that is, I, I it's probably still up for a, a very large debate, whether it's something that, that, that's man-made or actually extraterrestrial or, or now, as they theorize, extra dimensional. It, it's, it's really amazing, though, to to see some of that video and see some of those things, and you know, and and just contemplate everything that can come along with that. But you know, we've all known that there's you know there's things out there that they were not clearly not telling us the truth about for so many years and cover ups and all these different things. And you know, it'll be interesting to see if there's any you know, you know, in the, in sometime in the in the not too distant future, any sort of actual acknowledgement of you know 
what's been going on with well, that, don't you, you think? Yeah, well, you know, especially when you had the secretary of the Air Force back here again yes. a couple months ago, he men- mentioned yeah. that our next major war is not going to be a ground war. It's going to be out in outer space. So you can take that two mm. different ways, you know, but I mean, you know, yeah. but, you know, I, I, I will say this, Orson Welles, War of the Worlds. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you know, that if it wasn't for him, I, I honestly think he is the godfather of uh, paranormal to bring it out. Ah, uh, yeah. 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 I mean, he was so far advanced in, you know, what he did with that uh radio play with world of the world's broadcast just amazing what he did with that before social media before anything like that and and what he was able to achieve with that where people were just just completely freaking out thinking that that was all actually really you know happening at the time um, it is amazing it's totally amazing well he did announce at the beginning of the the, the show that it was a show and mm-hmm. it was not real but then there was a lot of people that tuned in a few minutes late you know and and, you know, they started freaking out, you know, like mm-hmm. Farmer Jones tells his wife, get underneath the bed. I'm getting the shotgun. We're being invaded by aliens, you know? Yeah. You know, I, I, that's what kind of really, though, I think that the government really thinks that if they disclose stuff to us, right, we're all going to panic. And I guess there will be a certain amount of people that will panic and, and feel like, the, you know, the world's coming to the end and uh, who knows what could happen. But um, well, I think you're right. I mean, people, it depends on where you're coming from and how open your mind is as to how you would interpret that kind of information. You know, I mean, it's it's you know, it could be like your old station manager and he could have religious objections to it. Or it could be people like us that have a very open mind to, you know, all of the, the mysteries of, of life and the universe and everything, and that uh, are more interested in knowing what's going on and, and learning about it rather than, than just simply fearing the unknown. Oh, yeah. That's why I was ecstatic when I found you and I wanted you, you know, to be yeah. on my show. You know, I, I, I have talked about this several times in the last five months with different guests. I managed a business in Tacoma, Washington. Uh, back yeah. in yeah. Uh, the nineties and early 2000 and the mm-hmm. building was built in 1870 around there. Wow. And originally yeah. it was a bar in the basement and then it was a hotel and, uh, it had mm-hmm. like 13 or 14 stories, which in the sixties, they took off about five stories cause it was unsafe, but, uh, yeah. it was a brothel and all the stuff. And I, uh, had employees working for me. I was a general manager. It was a camera photography business. We had a few stores and I'd have employees go downstairs. Now the, the basement was huge because it was a big building and the basement mm-hmm. actually we even went under the main street a ways. I would have employees coming up, Ron, and saying, Hey, this place is haunted. And I'd look at them. I go, yeah. you know, at this first, you know, at first, cause you know, um, the owner didn't tell me and admit to me to after I was there about 10 years or more that mm-hmm. it was haunted. Hey, I never myself saw anything scary till I was about there 12 years, but I'd have these different employees yeah. for all those years and they didn't know each mm-hmm. other because it would be, you know, you hire some people, they quit, you hire new people, they quit. They would come upstairs. Yeah, There's turnover. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And they would say, Hey, something just, you know, moved on its own downstairs or, they saw this or something <laughs> happened, right? You know what I I thought? Yeah. I figured, okay, you're a crackpot. And I didn't say anything. And then a lot of them would quit mm. because they refused to go down and get stock down in the basement. Well, well I they could, get spooked and they didn't want to go back in they, there, right? They, yeah. No. And the owner of the business would never go down in the basement. If he did, it was down there as fast as he could and back out. I never thought yeah. about it to one day I was in the basement because I couldn't get anybody to go down there and get anything. I went down there myself <laughs> and all of a sudden I was walking and all of a sudden it went really ice cold. I smelt yeah. lilac so strong. It made me sick. Wow. I walk another foot, the smell went away. Okay. So I picked up stuff and I, you'd think down in that basement, you, you'd smell the sewer system, you know? Uh, right. Or it'd be musty something basement like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, I, I went up, you know, didn't think anything of it. Then maybe a month or two or so later, I went back down there to get something. 
Now, again, this was a huge basement. I'm talking because it was a huge building. Uh, you know, I, I was down there all by myself. It was poorly lit. Somebody tapped me on my shoulder to the point where it actually hurt. I, I doubled up my fist. I was going to punch him. I'm sorry. That's how, you know, I, it annoyed me and yeah. it hurt. There was absolutely yeah. nobody there. Absolutely nobody. Wow. Nobody. You know, and then there were some nights I would work there, Ron, to like midnight, uh, you know, doing paperwork yeah. and ordering and stuff like that. I'd be in my yeah. office and still, because it still had a couple uh, stair uh, floors to the building and they were used mm -hmm. as offices and stuff like that. I'd be down there, right? I had the doors double bolted so nobody could come in from the outside. You know, no other right. employee, the owner, nothing without me going in and bolting it, right? I'd be in my office, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I hear footsteps. Not one or two, but like like a group, like three or four people going up the stairs, the flight of stairs. Wow. And then I'd get out, and I figured, well, gee, maybe one of the owners got in there somehow. Nobody there. Right. Then, to the, the, top it off, the last time I ever stayed there to, you know, when we closed at six, I was probably the first one out the door. The last time it ever happened to me, I was in my office, I heard the steps, I heard men and, you know, garbled and women talking mm. as they were going up the stairs. Yeah. I go, that's it. I am not, you know, I'm not coming back here again. <laughs> that was it. That was it. And then, That was actually the last time, huh? Yeah. And then I went up there the next day and I was, I was telling the owner and he goes, well, what do you think I haven't gone down there for? You know? And then he started yeah. pulling out of yeah. his desk and he showed like... Like uh, <laughs> like early 1900s, there was a prostitute murdered up, you know, up, up, up in the, the wow. hotel room. There was a couple shootings in the bar. It used to be down there, you know, you know, back around the 18, you know, 80s, 1890s. It was, you know, right next to the uh, bay where all the ships would come in. So you had a lot of sailors mm -hmm. in there at that time frame. So between oh, yeah. that and the Bigfoot really got me convinced there are things out there. You know, and, yes. that, and, and that's mm -hmm. why I think like your show uh, that you do, your magic you do, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people it feel the same way I feel. They've had experiences, so they know things are real out there. And so yeah. they enjoy what you do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, exactly. There, There is more of a culture of openness to it, of it and even acknowledgement to it now. But, I mean, you know, think about, I mean, ghost stories just go back to, I mean, before there was any, you know, mass media at all. I mean, those are the kind of stories we told around fires and things like that. Those things have always been there. Those stories have always been there and fascinated us. But for the longest time, I think a lot of people did try and just ignore them, like they, you know, try to ignore and deny anything, whether it was, you know, you, you know, uh, UFOs or Bigfoot or, or ghost stories, something like that. But those things have persisted. They've always been there. And now we're, we're gathering around a much larger fire called the Internet and all collectively telling those kind of stories. And you're right. There is. There's much more of a culture around all of it. And and we're fascinated. I mean, that's why there's so many paranormal shows and so many other shows. And why the there's always been talk shows like yours that come out, you know, and, and, and talk about all of these things. And that is just that's so awesome. But but I'm, I, and I'm glad because those those people do. They, they enjoy what I'm doing. They enjoy my kind of entertainment, even though I, you know, I plainly, you know, I always say, and I know never claim that it's anything else other than theatrical entertainment it is very much inspired by all of those things, by, by, uh, the supernatural, the occult and, you know, um, those kinds of, of, of dark and mysterious, that legend and lore that's out there, oh, yeah. you know, that tells those kind of stories. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's funny. Even, I mean, and it's everywhere. I mean, literally, I mean, in the, the, we shot Dark Realm, all of the, all, uh, many of the, the sequences, but all of, all of the stage um, uh, illusions and everything, the stage shows all shot in a theater in South Bend, Indiana, called the State Theater. And this has got an old, weird history like, like your building did. And it started off, I believe, as a vaudeville house and later a movie house. And then, you know, later in its life, it became a church for a while and then a nightclub. And, and then it was back into a theater. And uh, when we were in there, there were all these great stories about how the, the theater was haunted and that you would actually see the original, the vaudeville um, theater, that you would see the, if you looked up into the, the balcony from the stage, you would see him standing up in the balcony 
to watch the shows like he did all those 